we, we need to discuss, we'll talk about the game, mm. but let's, how did we end up having a 15 hour lunch yesterday? Shimmy, you, you invited me, so I take no responsibility. We got there, four people, and then there were 24 people. But it was some good names. Yeah, but something... you started the whole thing. We, <laughs> no, no, we, no, yes, no, you did. We said, let's start a quick, just go for one beer, and then it went into a let's go for brunch. But it's never one beer. It's never one beer. You need to say no, responsibility. Honest, okay, skulk, skulk. If someone invites you for one beer, it's never one beer. <laughs> never. Let's be honest. Never. Exactly. So when I said one beer, did I mean one beer? No. Well, uh, I, no. I can get my phone and show you a video that it, to prove that it wasn't one beer. That, that, yeah, that took me back. <laughs> that, that, that video took me to a dark space. <laughs> it was one beer and a lot of cigars and a very long day. And we ended up having to take a fellow opponent from the All Blacks home. He, he got tied. <laughs> Look, actually, enemy. it was Marshall that started. Justin Marshall talking about. He, he's the one. <laughs> was, okay, well, what happened was we had a little bit of work in the morning. I weren't sure where to go for lunch. And he said, mate, let's call Tins. Yeah. So Tyndall was there with Haskell and Alex Payne. Payne, yes. So then it was three of us plus two, which makes five. Oh, six. You were there, six. We ran off early. And then six turned into about 20. Uh, yeah. I think blinked. of that 20. The Saracens Mafia was there? Yes, the legends. <laughs> well, yes. <laughs> and the Saracens was, was, Mafia was there. And you wanted to have a picture with the other Shane, three legends. Only, no, it was four hookers. Yeah, yeah. there's Shane, three hookers now. And you were the only one who didn't make it to Saracens. <laughs> You barely wanted that was your one regret to Let me do you want to want a salary uh, yeah. sombrero you guys have. It's not a salary cap, it's a Saracens, it's a sombrero. But yeah. of the 20, <laughs> to finish off on the lunch, um, Marshy did catch a bit of excitelitis. What game, eh? Gee, was proper. Was, it, um, my wife said probably the most accurate thing about the weekend. She just sent a message, this team's going to be the death of us. Because man, oh man, that is, there's, a, there's a level of stress there that you don't seem to be able to find in anything else in your life. Yo, they took us... They How took did us, they dig themselves out of that hole? Though? Well, they took us down there with them and then they got out. It was a jailbreak of notes, eh? There was, yeah. there was something... We, I mean, Victor and I, we, we walked down with 20 to go, thinking that we were down against France and then we watched from the corner and they won. And so this week, I said to him, dude, we've got to go with 20. But with 20 to go, we really looked dead and buried. And Truz Bob, we get to the corner and... Watch this rebirth. It was that was so, pretty special. So you actually want to take the credit for being the lucky child, I mean, child, I'm glad right? you picked that up. But yes, <laughs> <laughs> well, Scala, I mean, you, you've been. I mean, both of you guys have been there. What, complacency or was it England just good? No, I, I would definitely not say complacency. It was a combination of playing, starting off with the pool games. You take Ireland, you take Scotland, you take Tonga. Then you've got France. And the way we play is quite direct. We we don't we don't have fancy plays. We try to out more, out scrum, and out strategize from a kicking perspective. The teams in England came with a I wouldn't say superior game plan, but I would say a team better, more be, better executed plan in, yes. the, in the way they are. England were good. Though. We got to give yeah, them credit. They were very good. And, and, and they were leading class. until seven eight minutes or something. Yeah. Seven nine minutes. Seven eight. Uh, yeah. We started leading the game with two minutes and twenty seconds left on the clock. And from that perspective, look, everybody's got an off day every now and then. And we made a lot of unforced errors that put a lot of pressure on us. But from, from that perspective, playing that badly, or give credit to England to, to disrupt us in certain set phases to come back from there, it shows a lot of character of the Springbok squad. Character for this weekend? <laughs> It's different a, week, yeah. Different week. The weather's going to be exactly the same. It's raining on Saturday morning. Is it? It's raining in the evening. They say particularly in the game it might not rain, but the field will be wet, the ball will be wet. And um, well, as a hooker, I haven't laughed as <laughs> much in my George. life. He was telling Jamie us yesterday, George. actually. Yeah. yeah. What, what did he say? What happened there? It looked like he was shoot, playing basketball. So what happened? So... Well, we laughed at it because he's, he's a phenomenal <laughs> he's a good uh, man. thrower. Yeah. He's a, firstly, he's a phenomenal guy. Secondly, he's one of the best throwers of, of, I know. Yeah. Um, but they called a play for him to throw over the back of the line out to Owen and then play out of the back, play a wide play. And so they said, go, go, go to the corner, get the ball and just throw it in to catch the South African boys off guard. And as he got it, they gave him a weight ball. There was no towel. 
And you oh, just grabbed it. Oh, oh, is that it was a weight oh, ball. Oh, so they're trying to do a tempo play, basically. A yeah, tempo play. You. Okay, yeah. And then as he took it, he felt the ball slipping back, and he just like, boom. <laughs> now, Stephen Kitsoff is the first lucid prop to ever catch a lob ball. We're in the commentary box. And that happened. And I couldn't figure out what the hell happened. I was like, I thought Kitsoff maybe, in, in, like, in, they tried to go for the short throw and intercepted it. Got it there and then flipping, yeah. Yeah. Did you start drinking that you thought he threw a lob ball at one? No, but I couldn't. You remember, well, us of commentary excellence. Oh, okay, of course. Yeah. When it went over the top. So and you wait for the replay. How did you describe Skala, it on, you were in the on crowd commentary? With, with, with the big dogs there. Which, which box were you in? Uh, no you box. don't sit in the stands. No, I, I, was, I know you don't sit in the stands. I was sitting in the stands right at the top with the South African supporters. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> what? Was the banner uh, next to you? <laughs> no. <laughs> he, he was raking in the box <laughs> somewhere. Tell me, boys, um, final coming up this weekend. Yeah. Your thoughts? What happens the week of a final? Uh, Why are you actually from you? you? You, I mean, you've played, yeah. Yeah, you, you've you've been there. Final week is very di different to any other week. I mean, the, the, the thing that stood out for us is the first press conference. There was probably <coughs> 150 to 200 more cameras from all over the world, and then you sort of get there and you realize, okay, this is a little bit different. So, the difficulty with the, with the final week is that it's. Everyone wants to come and watch the game. Everyone's looking for tickets. You're trying to get your missus there. You're trying to get your kids there. There's more press. There's much more hype. But you've got to still stay in the moment and, and do what you've been doing for the last four years to win the game. So the hype is is a big thing. Yeah. Um, but, but it's a special but as, as a captain, you'll feel it as a captain, but do the players feel that? Yeah, of course. Yeah. Absolutely. It was... Uh, there's it was, it was, a lot of like tension. So how you manage yourself emotionally is quite a, quite important, and also the, how you talk and and a lot of that gets worked out from the coaching staff. Coaching staff are calm. The captain's calm. Then there's a bit more calm. Um, but you know it's a difficult thing to control. The cool thing is that this team has been there four years ago. Yeah, hundred percent. That's what I said. Look at the other side. Technically, on the on the final day, we've got one day less to prepare than New Zealand. The, the, uh, in Japan, we only trained two days, and it was quite. It was like a captain's run every day. Oh, yes. was it was chilled. Yeah, it was very chilled. So we 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 had one day less to prepare. We, I think we played on a Sunday, and it was only we had only two training sessions, and it was we knew the team, we knew how to strategize against England, and from that perspective, it was quite quite relaxed. And it was weird because the expectation was from from the media and everyone that England's gonna easily win the final. Yeah. Mm. So th that took sort of pressure off us. Jock and Rossi was phenomenal in taking the, the focus to them and not to us and saying how good uh, England was against New Zealand and they are the favourites. And f for us it was just a, just a game, not just a game, but the, the angle that Rossi took in the final week and leading up to the final was, it wasn't about winning the World Cup, but it wasn't about winning this match. It was about giving hope to South Africa. And I think that message will still reminisce with the, so with the same the squad. So purpose around the, the, the game and... Yeah, and the purpose is is to give hope in South Africa, to show that we've got so a div diversity of of players, of religion, of background, of colour, that, that this isn't about a rugby match. It's about giving hope. And if you play for a bigger cause, then it's... It, it, you don't think about the hurts and the tiredness. You think about the people back what, home. What it means back home. Yeah. So, yeah. so what what is nice is this squad, this particular squad, uh, is has been building from 2019, and the focus has never been 2019. It's been 2023, but it's been the hardest. No disrespect to 2019 or 07 to go through what we've yeah. done, play all those big teams. So it's hard. Saturday will be this. We've will mean we've played the top ranked six teams in the world currently. Through, through this yeah. final, through this World Cup. That's insane. Now, so, uh, this team has had to, this is a tough road but, yeah, to just, get to this they've final. They've taken the tough road, yeah. yeah. Favourites, who, who do you consider the favourite? Look, if, if you look at us against New Zealand, so it was, you go back 19, uh, 19, so 18, I'll go back 18, we beat them and New Zealand. Yes, correct. They beat opening drew. game, of, yeah, yeah, drew one, then we lost the opening game, and then we had the 100th, we lost by a point. The following week, we won by a point. And then I can't remember. I think there's two more times. Then we had the blowout in Mount Smart. Yeah. The blowout in Twickenham. 
And in between that, there was Bombella and Ellis Park, where they won. Yeah. And then, sorry, we won Bombella, they won Ellis Park. And now we've got the World Cup final. So, uh, our, so the points difference is, is it's tight. It's tight. Uh, let, let, so, me, yeah. let me rather go back with the mentality is what Rossi will, I think, would Rossi yeah. employ. We as South Africans, looking from a South African perspe- perspective, is we like to have our backs against the wall. Yeah. We want to be the underdogs. And that is what Rossi would say. I think he would go in there and say, But how does he create well, that narrative what, now? So, so why is that though we're good at being underdogs though? It's a we, weird, it's a weird yeah, thing. We love like, it, if, if we tell us, it's, someone yeah. tells us we yeah. flip and... The worst thing you can do to South yeah. is tell my goodies. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, <laughs> England, England were very complimentary he, last he, week. He turns into a monster. Just quite right right weird. Right? <laughs> straight away. Yeah. <laughs> um, I think it's got to do with, I guess, where we come from. The fact yeah. that you need to be quite resilient. Um, mm. um, we, we always feel like back home we're fighting through something, yeah. uh, for something. And, and so... Things, I mean, it's, they're not always comfortable, you know. So it so can be a struggle back home for a lot of people. So our mentality is always to knuckle down and, and rise up against adversity, w- w- yeah. adversity and, and, and overcome. And um, that's why I think we, we fit into that seat a little better around feeling like, you know, stuff them, you know, we'll show them, or there's, we, we want to climb up that, that, that mountain. The worst thing is, uh, is, is for us is to sit on top and, and continue. We talk to, how good we are. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Talking about um, the, the weekend, the, the bomb squad, Ox and Shea, guys. We've we got to talk about Ox's impact on that game. It's a game. Of, it's a I game. Guess, it's, you don't pick a reset to change a game for you. Yeah. You know what I mean? He's sort of there to do the damage. But the impact he had is probably yeah. one of the, the, the greatest yeah. innings we'll it see. It became a, a game of inches. <laughs> <laughs> he was good though. He was proper. World class. <laughs> that was that was insane. I mean, we, we, we myself and Victor joked because the first scrum, I think it was with Dan Cole, and you sort of see his back do do that, and then sort of straighten. It looked like the worm. So it's like he's the only only guy I can teach the, a grown man how to do the worm. And so he just does that. He's just short squat. He's hard to deal with, and he's you know what the, the thing that makes him good is that he's hungry for that scrum. Yeah, that's all he wants is the turnover. And, he wants to and eat. cake. He wants to eat. And cake. Doesn't eat salads. <laughs> Guys, and the, and the how substitutions. Many, how, many, how many salads have you had this tour? <laughs> well, from, that's rich coming from, from, from the yeah. looks. That's rich coming from the looks. It hasn't been a lot right, of What are you, supermodel skin? <laughs> I reckon one more week and I'm in that top. Look at you. <laughs> <laughs> so, dark colors, bro. Dark colors. Makes yeah. you look skinnier. That's why I'm keeping my hands over my bop. Um, the, the subs, guys. I mean, obviously, we feel for a guy like Marnie, though. You know, obviously, been taken. No, no flower off once you get taken mm. off early, but um, it happens in rugby. Pollard delivered also. I mean, that, that kick. Well, Shumi, if you go back, the, the big thing that Rossi talks with in the squad a lot, and Ro- sorry to re- back to refer to that, is entitlement. And he said, listen, boys, put your ego in your pocket. I'm going to, we, the coaching squad, him and Jock and everyone involved, is they going to do what's best for the squad and not, not as particular individual? And yes, it's not great for Marnie's sake that Marnie got t- t- taken off that early on. But there was a cause behind it. If you take Eben, he's played 115 test matches. He went put, off. Oh, Sia went off. Sia went Dwayne off. went off. And I must say, once again, with the way Rassi's built into this World Cup, he's given his grown depth within the squad. And everyone knows their particular role within the bomb squad when they come on, what is their particular task. And the, the boys, literally, that bomb squad changed the outcome of that result. On that topic, though, yep. you've got to give kudos to that coaching staff. That's big kahonas. Yeah. Big kahonas to bring up, take your captain off, take, make a big change at 10, take Evan off, who was your your, your game changer yeah, last week with a try. Mm. They've got kahunas, these these guys. It's, it's incredible. You got to you got to pay homage to that because they do. They trust the squad. They yeah. trust the players, and they and they let the players. They give the players an opportunity to make those changes. Last week, Evan scores the try. This week, Erge scores the try. You know? Yeah, it's just. Stemmer's been good. He has been good. You know, yeah, he, he gives me anxiety when it's raining and he continues to go with the one hand, but he gets it right. Yeah. he made no mistakes last week. Twitter wars before the, the the week before the England game. 
calling Springboks what a Northern Hemisphere team because everyone's <laughs> playing in Europe. I mean, the game's changed, John. Uh, uh, John, I mean, uh, it, uh, it, it wasn't. I mean, there's Twitter, no. there's this, there's following this guy and unfollowing, and no, it's certain things you listen to and certain things you just have to laugh at. I mean, it's, yeah, that's where the game is. Yeah. But from, from you, uh, Scala, I mean, you, you, I mean, you just recently, well, you recently retired. But <laughs> social media and rugby. Do the guys read all the crap on, on well, <laughs> all the stuff on social media? <laughs> well, no, no. no. no was, Do they, I mean, I, you, you know what I mean? Like, you, you look at some of the abuse that's on the social media. You know, you get compliments as well as a lot of abuse. Yeah, well, it, it was. Um, I spoke to a, a player that was, there was yesterday, uh, and. It's he's gone off all social media, oh, the, okay. because the the problem is, and, and the, this is quite serious. It's so easy to to abuse a player by social media, but the problem is he's he's a father, he's got a wife, and because he's off social media, they attack. Especially when your kids grow up. Yeah, and yeah. the problem is now that the the channel of aggression is towards his missus. Yeah, oh. and, th and that makes a massive impact on those players. Um, and that's what social me media has done. Yes, there's a positive side, but there's a very dark side as well. 